it had been a day of traveling. Orby discovered that the ticket man on the train was surprised that Orby was handling his own ticket. Katie found out that a train picnic was lots of fun, and they both learned that after a while, the clickety-clack of the train made you feel a little snoozy. <laughs> now, Katie and Orby were on their way to visit her grandparents, and it was usually great fun to be in the big city, but I'm sorry to say this time, Katie was very sad. The day before their holiday began, Mrs. Perrette had become ill. She was in the hospital. Katie had wanted to make cards for her and go visit, but the plans for the holiday had been set. The family had to go. Luckily, Yi Ping's family were going to help Mrs. Perrette, and that was good, except Katie wasn't sure that they would remember she liked onion bagels from the bagel shop or that flowers on her cards made her happy. Really, she just wanted to be there herself. As the train rumbled into the station, Mom reminded Katie that they would call each night to see how Mrs. Perrette was feeling. On the platform, Katie threw her arms around Granddaddy and Granny. She was really glad to see them, but in her heart, she was still sad about Mrs. Perrette. The next day, Granddaddy took Katie and Orby for a walk in the park. And as they walked, Orby saw a great climbing tree and shot right up to a high branch. Granddaddy looked down at Katie. Didn't she want to climb too, he wondered, and Katie shook her head. She didn't really feel like it. And Granddaddy smiled and squeezed her hand. It was hard to be sad. At the old drinking fountain in the middle of the park, Orby took a sip, and then he put his finger on the nozzle, and, <laughs> and he squirted Katie. She was very surprised, but she laughed, and she climbed up and tried to do the same thing to Orby, only she squirted herself instead. <laughs> it, was, it was really funny. She tried again as Orby bent over, laughing, and when he straightened up, she squirted the top of his head. <laughs> Orby pretended it was raining and looked up in the sky for clouds. Uh, and Katie certainly laughed at that. My granddaddy noticed that once they were walking again, Katie's sadness had come back. Right then and there, he stopped. He told Katie and Orby the day struck him as being an incredible wish day. And on an incredible wish day, well... You just had to make a wish. Katie and Orby looked at each other. They didn't know what Granddaddy was talking about, and immediately he told them to start thinking of a wish. He knew one of the best places on Earth for wish-making, and off he went. As she raced behind him, Katie asked if these wishes really, really came true. <laughs> Granddaddy chuckled and told her every last one of them. Katie would have stopped in amazement, but she couldn't. She had to run to keep up. And they arrived at a place with some old trees that stood in a huge circle. Bright, colorful flowers grew around them, and in the clearing, there stood a tall stone statue of a woman in a fountain. In her arms, she held a huge shell. And from the shell, water poured down into the fountain, making a very satisfying splashing sound. Granddaddy explained it was a wishing fountain. He told them they had to make a very good wish. Everyone knew only good wishes came true. Then Granddaddy pulled three coins out of his pocket, and he gave one each to Katie and Orby and kept one for himself. He asked Katie to go first, but she wasn't ready yet. She thought hard as Orby did his. He wished the rope swing that hung from a tall old tree in the park would be empty when they got there so he could try it. Then he closed his eyes and wished hard and tossed the coin into the fountain. Granddaddy told him his was a good wish and was sure to come true. But Katie was still thinking hard, so Granddaddy went next. He wished that today the ice cream vendor at the edge of the park would have his favorite orange peach ice cream. And with that, he closed his eyes, wished hard, and tossed his coin into the fountain. At last, Katie moved closer. She was squeezing her wish right into the coin, and Granddaddy said he was surprised that the coin didn't pop with all that great wishing going into it. 
And Katie closed her eyes and told the fountain that she wished Mrs. Perret would get all better and feel terrific really soon. And then she scrunched her eyes tight with wishing and tossed the coin into the fountain. Granddaddy thought Katie's was a very good wish, and it would come true, too. Later, further on in the park, Orby stopped short. Right in front of him was the rope swing. There was no one around him. It was the best swing in the world because the ropes were so long you could almost swing up to the sky. And with a smile from Granddaddy, Orby shot off in a pink blur. In seconds, he was swinging up and down and tooting with glee. And Katie was thrilled that his wish had come true. Maybe hers would, too. At the edge of the park, they approached the ice cream vendor. He greeted Granddaddy with a great big orange and peach ice cream cone. Katie and Orby had one, too, and now Katie was sure her wish would come true. That's why, at the end of the day, when Katie called to find out how Mrs. Perret was feeling, she was really disappointed. Her wish didn't even nearly come true. Mrs. Perret was still sick. She told her about her wish and that she was sad it hadn't come true. When Granddaddy came in to kiss her goodnight, he saw how sad she was. He whispered that sometimes big wishes took a little time. And I think he was right because the next morning, Yi Ping called bright and early to tell Katie that Mrs. Perrette had had a great night and was feeling a whole lot better. Mrs. Perrette took the phone from Yi Ping and thanked Katie for her great wish. She wasn't all better yet, but she knew she would be soon. And I have to tell you that to this very day, nobody knows for sure if it was the wishing fountain or not. But Mrs. Perrette felt better, better than ever. And that was really all that mattered. And I hope one day, when you really need a wish, you'll wish so hard that you'll almost pop the coin, too. You never know. In time, your wish might just come true. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. Everybody has fingerprints. They're the design that all those squiggly lines make on the ends of your fingers. Your prints will look kind of like your parents' fingerprints, but not exactly. Fingerprints are unique, just like you. 